Greetings, friend. I will show you some doker tricks you need to know in order to solve this puzzle, Smolder by the T-Rex. Not only will I show you these tricks, I will show you how you need to do them and in what particular order, how they work, and how to make you a better Sudoku solver. Click below you, I'll give it a go. And with that, it's solving time. Okay, I have solved this puzzle before. Uh, when I tried it, I thought this was a great puzzle. I wanted to show it on my channel. You'll notice there's a lot of givens here with the T-Rex. And so you may want to focus on some of these rows, columns, where there are just a, a decent amount of givens. One thing you will need to know is that this is a five, six, eight naked triple. There's only three candidates that can uh, fill in the rest of column two, five, six, and eight. And because of the five, six, and eight that are already placed here, here, and here, uh, they are by value cells, BVCs. And so when you see a lot of by value cells, that usually will lend itself to more advanced strategies. Now, if you try doing this puzzle, you're not going to be able to put in one digit unless you know uh, at least one advanced strategy. So I'm going to show you the quickest way, the least amount of advanced strategies you need to get through this puzzle. Because it'll be a little frustrating if you try it on your own. If you're just going to do normal cross hatching and standard notation, you're not going to get very far. Uh, believe it or not, the key candidate that you need to focus on is right here. It's these sevens. You need to focus on these sevens. In fact, to the point that I'm going to solve this puzzle in a way I've never had before and I've never done on this channel, but it'll show you exactly why we need to focus on the sevens and how they're the key to this particular puzzle. So I'm, right here, I'm just going every single possibility for a seven in this puzzle. Okay, we need two here, it can be the two here. And we'll color that green, because green's a nice color, right? Uh, we'll get rid of that. Okay, so. That's where a seven can be in this puzzle as of right now. Now, we can use these colors to come up with our first advanced strategy, the one that's gonna clear out some of these sevens. Our goal is to clear out as many of these green cells as we can, which denote a seven, in order to solve this puzzle. And we do that, we get to the point where there's just gonna be one left in the house, you know, row, column, or block, and then we'll start solving. You might notice there's one advanced strategy that kind of sticks out to me right now, and you hopefully you might see it as well. And it involves columns five and eight. This is a Sudoku skyscraper. And so I'm going to color them. Ah, let's go blue. Blue's a little more stand outish. Okay, so what we notice in columns five and eight, the sevens are limited to two cells, right? And, and then with, but they share a row. So they share one row, the tops are different. The tops are in the same band, but different rows of those of the band. So the band up here is this top band, and they're in rows one and two. This is a Sudoku skyscraper. And what it means is that a seven either at least has to be here or here, because the seven's here. Uh, great. Any you know cell that sees this, you can't have a seven. If a seven's not here, a seven would have to be here. This wouldn't be a seven, and then this would have to be a seven all right we could have a seven in both places but at least one has to be in these top blue cells so we can eliminate a seven from any cell that sees both the top blue ones so all these green cells we can eliminate a seven right because you put a seven right here you block out these two spots and then for columns five and eight you'd have to put a seven here and here i have done a great tutorial on skyscrapers and x-wings actually so you want to learn more about that click on it right now and while you're doing that, subscribe to more hobbies if you want to solve skyscrapers even better. Okay, but that is not the main strategy. And in fact, you need to pay attention because we're going to like two or three more strategies. The last one's the most important. It's the one that's going to make your jaw drop and you're like, oh, this is so cool, Timberlake. Thanks for showing this to me. All right, we're going to change these back to green. Okay, so we eliminated some of those sevens there. Now, what's the next seven we need to look at? It's a strategy called, well, first, before I get to that, you see how the sevens are now limited in row one here in block two? That means uh, they're basically lock candidates, right? It's a pointing triple, you may want to call it. They're lock candidates. It means the seven can't be in either of these two spots. So we can eliminate those sevens as well. There's actually three ways you can solve this next cell elimination. And you can do it as a finned X-wing. You can do it as 
an empty rectangle, or you can do it as a two-string kite. I'm going to show you the two-string kite version. I think that might be the intent because it involves the the can we have. I feel like it's a little bit more elegant. All right. So what you want to focus on are these four cells right here, and we'll blue them up again to kind of see what I'm talking about. So two-string kite. The way you can identify one is you look into a block and you see a strong leak coming out one of the rows and a strong leak coming out one of the columns. And strong leak mean, meaning that there's one inside the block and only one possibly for that cannon outside the block. So you see that we have that in row three. And then the same thing down here, we have this in column eight. And what it means is a seven, you got to be in this blue spot. If it's not there. A seven would be here, which would eliminate the seven from this spot. And then we make that a seven. So a seven is either here or it's here. And that, because of that, we can eliminate a seven from any cell that sees both. So we can eliminate the seven from this cell right here. This can never be a seven. And I'll challenge you, see if you can find the way to do it with the fin X wing or the empty rectangle. You'll still get the same elimination right there. Uh, in fact, there's some other strategies here that I found that I'm not even gonna cover. Uh, maybe when you do your solving, you find a different method. Uh, there's an X, Y, Z wing I found. There's a couple of X, Y chains. Uh, different than the one I'm about to show you. So keep this up. This is very important stuff. And it also reminds me of another great puzzle that I've done. Stay tuned to the end because you will want to watch that as well. It will teach you some new things and new tricks on how to solve puzzles like this. Okay, the next thing we need, we've made some progress, is we actually have to do some eliminations down here before we can get to that next advanced strategy. You have to look down here and go, okay, what can be in these cells right there. All right, what can this cell be? And before we can even get to that, we have to do a couple other things, all right? You're gonna notice that there's a four cutting across here, a four coming up, column five, so you need fours in these two cells. Uh, also, because of the three cutting across here and the three coming down, column five, you need a three in one of these two cells. Okay, that's a little important. This will come back later. But now we're going to look across row nine. You think like there's nothing going on in row nine, but there's actually quite a bit going on here that's going to help us solve and put in our next advanced strategy. So what can this cell be right here? It looks like it could be a two, three, five, or an eight. Two, three, five, eight. Okay, this cell right here looks like it could be a two or an eight. And we'll, we'll actually come up here and go, this could be a 7 or an 8. And then this can be a 2, 7, or 8. And the reason this is 7 or 8 is what I showed you here, how this can't be, the 4s can't be there because they're limited to row 4. So can't, a 4 can't be here, and the 3s are limited down there, so this can't be a 3. Okay, so we got that. And then what can this cell be? 1, 2, it looks like it can be a 3. Um, it can be a 3 or an 8. Okay. And then let's look at this cell right here. There's a lot filled in. And when I tell you about telegraphing, the TRX put a lot of cannons in here. What he telegraphed is focus on these these uh, houses that have a lot of cells. And he's actually wanting you to figure out how to solve this cell right here. This is the key. But in order to solve the cell, you got to focus on the sevens. So let's look right here. If you came down here, you'd probably notice there's a two, five, or eight that could be in this cell. Okay. And so what does that mean? It means that these four cells right there, and we'll use some purple, is a naked quad because 2, 3, 5, 8 are limited to those four cells. This is great stuff. You actually have to find this in order to make some progress in this puzzle. And so this naked quad means that the rest of these cells are 1, 4, 6, and 9. And we'll do some eliminations here. You know, this can't be a 1 or a 6 because of this 1, 6. Uh, this... This can't be a six either, which makes the six is limited to these two cells right there, which is good for us. And but the key thing is that the threes are now limited to these two cells. And so the threes have to be there. And I'll show you just a second why that's important. It's important because we want to figure out what's in this cell right here. What can this cell be? Well, it can't be a one or two. We now know it can't be a three. It can't be a four or five or a six. It can only be a seven or an eight. It can't be a nine. Okay, now we have enough information here for our next advanced strategy. With just these by value cells, I'm going to show you an XY chain that is crucial to 
to making progress in this puzzle. And it starts right here, and I'll I'll color all the all the candidates you need for the X Y chain. Then you go here, here, or actually you're going to go use all those cells, and you're going to end up right there. Okay, here's how it works. The easy way to figure this out with the X Y chain this is this could be a seven. If it's not a seven, this is an eight. That'd be a five. That'd be a six. That'd be an eight, and this would have to be a seven. So we know a seven has to be either be here or here. Uh, a lot of times I talk about strong and weak links. I'm not going to here because it's pretty easy to show. Either this is a seven, this is not a seven, that's a seven. I just showed you how. Which means these two cells cannot contain a seven. So we can eliminate the colors from those two cells. We've done some more work, but we needed to figure out that this could only be a seven, eight to make that work. So let's get our green back. And now we're going to get to what I promise the most important strategy, the one that will start allowing us to solve candidates for this puzzle. And the T-Rex, I love what he does. You know, he likes putting in these advanced type strategies and he likes making it in a kind of way that's kind of fun for you to find and figure out. And the fact that he layered them up like he did, I love it. It's good. It's good stuff. It's a way to treat and see these advanced strategies. And if you're not that familiar with XY chains, I do have a very popular tutorial on that. I'll put a link to it here. You can go check that out and see exactly how they work and how the links work and how you can make eliminations every time. Okay, so the last strategy, the one we need to solve this, we've got to the point where we can actually do it. And this is the one that's going to blow your mind the way this one works. It is called an X chain. Okay, and how an X chain works, I talk about X means there's only one can involved. So it's a single can of strategy, but this one's a little elaborate. And so you have to do some looking to kind of figure out the whole strategy. We had to eliminate these other sevens in order to get to this point. And the way it works, it's similar to an X Y chain, except that you're using one can that you care about. You only care about the sevens. And it's going to use a series of strong and weak links. And so strong link is when you have uh, two cells or two possibilities in a row column or block so right here you this is a seven that's not a seven this is a seven so that's a strong link weak link means if one is true then all the other possibilities in a row column block are false so if this is a seven these two would be false since there's two other possibilities this would be a weak link so this is strong and this is weak and the other thing to keep in mind is that a strong link can also act as a weak but you got to alternate you get it's an alternate inference chain that's how it works alternate between the two so we start right here and i'll put i'll, I'll color get a little purple action going say this is seven this has a strong link to this seven right here a weak link to this seven we're following the colors a strong link to this seven there's only two sevens right here weak link to this seven as a surrogate weak link then a strong link to this seven a weak link to this seven there's multiples here, and then a strong link to this seven right there. But what this means is this is a seven, then this cell right here cannot be a seven. If this is not a seven, this would have to be a seven, this wouldn't. This would have to be a seven, this would not be. This would have to be a seven, and this wouldn't. And then, you know, this would have to be a seven. And so I kind of finish it up here. You could stop right there at the X chain, but I'm going to go up here because there's some other eliminations I want to make with it as well. Because I want you to see that you can eliminate this cell. That can't be a 7. And you can eliminate a 7 from this cell right here. And this is huge. This is what we were looking for. Because now we can do some solving. We figured out what is right here. The T-Rex wanted you to figure out what this cell was in order to make more solving. And so now... What we know is this cell has to be an 8, and we can do some solves. So that's an 8, which means this is a 2, and this is a 7. Okay, the other thing we would know is since this is an 8, this is a 6, that's a 5, this is an 8, and this is a 7. See how that works? And so we're now we're starting to do some solving here, some really good solving. So we figured out the use of those X chains. And by doing that, we're able to 
figure out what was in this cell right here. Now we can make some more products, but we're not done. There's still some other strategies we need to be able to solve this puzzle. So stay tuned and stay tuned to the end because I want to give you that link to that other puzzle that's going to also blow your mind. You're going to love it. So keep watching here because now you got to see, okay, how did this help us and where are we going to go from here? And so you want to do is start focusing on some of these candidates that we just filled in and see how far we can take them. Okay, so we got seven, seven, two spots for seven here. In fact, I'm not even planning to do much more marking because we're going to be able to do so much great solving here as we move forward. Uh, so I'll try to limit the marks as best I can. So you see that there's eight cuts across. So now eights are limited to these two spots. And whenever you see Snyder limited to the same two spots, then we know that the three and eight are limited as a hidden pair. And so we... We've got to get rid of the five and the two. And so this is a three eight hidden pair. And so we can get rid of the eight. We can also get rid of the two. This has to be a five. Great. Two, three, eight, five. There's only one cell remaining here. We can actually solve that. That's going to be a five as well. And then this has to be a five. So now we're starting to solve fives. Great. Okay. And then if you look here, what you'll notice is six and nine can't be in any of those spots. So six and nine are limited to these two cells here in block seven. So now that's a six, nine, which makes this a one, four naked pair. And now since it's a one, four naked pair, uh, one, one, and these ones, this has to be your one. And then this would have to be your four. And so we can solve that. Okay. And now we're making more progress here. One, so this is an eight or a nine. You got a nine right there. So here's a nine. Here's an eight. Okay. And what do we have left here? It looks like you need a two and a three. There's two. There's two. And there's your three. Okay. Now we're just working our way. Two and a two. You're going to do some cross hatching. And this is the part you're like, okay, I want to cross hatch and get as much solving as I can. With all these twos coming in here, block two, there's the only place left for a two. Do we have any more twos to solve? No. We got all the twos knocked out. Awesome. Now, what's the next? candidate we want to look at okay well let's go back to these fours remember how these fours are a pointing pair that can't be a four and you got a four come up here and a four down here it means this cell is the only place left for a four in block six and then we also have a full house here so we can solve for the seven right there as well so now we've limited what's remaining in block and so you got these two fives it means the only place left for a five and what's left in here is an eight and nine uh, because of this nine, that can't be a nine. That's got to be your eight, and that's got to be your nine. Great. Now follow these eights over here, and we can solve for an eight in block four. The only place left for the eight. Uh, look at the nine cutting across and the nine coming down. This has to be your nine. Anytime you display Snyder, you know you can solve right away. There we go. We can solve that for a four. And what you're left with is a three and a seven. I got my seven here. So this has to be a three. That has to be your seven. Okay, making great progress here. With this three, I love it when I can solve these BVCs because I know that has to be an eight, that has to be three. I'm getting rid of those marks and doing some more solving. Let's come up here. What is the missing candidate? It looks like it's going to be an eight. And now eight, eight with this eight means this has to be an eight. I got another full house. You always want to go back to the full house. That's going to be your quickest way to do the solving. Great. So we knock that out uh, with that full house. And then now what are we looking at here? Looks like this is a five, six, seven. I got a five there and I got a seven there. We can solve all three of these cells. This five, seven means this has to be your six. This five means this has to be your seven and that's gonna be your five. Nice. And now we can look and go, okay, I got to solve that six. So this has gotta be your six. This is gonna be your four. And so we made more progress there. We now have a full house with a six remaining. So we can solve that six, which helps us solve these BVCs. All right, got that nine, got that six right there. Awesome. And now we got another full house here. This is going to be a seven. Cool. Nine, nine and nine means this has to be your nine. Great. We got one cell there. It's going to be a three. Awesome, awesome. And so this three and this three means this has to be a three, which leaves us with a one. And now we can solve these other BVCs. So that's a four, that's a one. Uh, come up here. What is remaining? We're missing the four. We got this four. It means this has to be your four up here, and this is going to be your last seven. 
you need to watch this other video to see Sudoku tricks you must know. I want to give a huge shout out to Bonnie and John Brown. They donated my Buy Me A Copy page, got me to my first goal. So I'm now going to start offering membership. So monthly puzzle hunts, exclusive privileges and content. You're going to love it. Thank you also so much, the T-Rex, for letting me feature puzzle on this channel. You're an awesome setter. And thank you so much for watching.